I know that no matter how bad it gets, it can change and it will change. Is it going to take a bit of work? Absolutely. But if you set some goals and you decide that you actually want to change, you don't want to be a product of your environment, no matter how shit it is right now, shit can change for you if you want it to. You're listening to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, a podcast where I have conversations with inspirational people. My name is Chris, but my family calls me Christoph. My goal is to have as many conversations as possible with people who have forged their own path by pursuing their dreams, making them a reality, all the while emitting positivity and sharing this knowledge with others. I seek these people out and share this information with you, proving to the world that you can do what makes you happy and do what you want for a living while being a good human being. We'll talk about careers, but we'll also cover any story that inspires. Let's do this while helping each other. Thanks for listening. I'm happy you're here. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, Create Your Career. This is conversation number 140, another landmark episode. So excited. This is total episodes number 236. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. I'm always excited. My guest today was uh, was pretty powerful. This this is a good one. My guest is somebody that I've wanted to have on here for the last six months, and it just couldn't quite happen. And tonight, we made it happen. And that guest is Jordan Fitzy Fitzgerald. Fitzy is a former, now a former commando from the New Zealand Army, and he had to wait until he got out to do this. So I'm so excited that he did transition out and that he came on the show. Show. We talked a little bit about that transition, but we dug a lot deeper into his childhood as well and why he got into the military, why he got out of the military, and we kind of correlate that to even if you're not in the military and you're a civilian, how is that applicable? And he also found it Warfighter Athletic. I'm not even going to get into that right now. I want him to tell you what that is. It's so much more than what it seems like on the surface. And if you follow this brand on Instagram and their website, warfighterathletic.com or Warfighter Athletic on Instagram, you will know quite quickly that this company actually cares. And I wanted to know why he cares so much. It came through so genuinely through social media. And I had to ask him and we've talked about it on the phone and he shared today. Remember, you can find this episode and all other episodes, not only here on audio and all other audio podcasts, podcast platforms you can head over to youtube and watch the conversations so subscribe there and all of the conversations and the contemplations which are the solo episodes are on audio only and you can find me on instagram at christoph lewis thank you so so much for your undying support it's been yet another month of growth here at the christoph lewis podcast create your career thank you for sharing it with friends thank you for going over to youtube all of these things help and i'm endlessly full of gratitude for that so without further ado let's get into this powerful episode so welcome to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, Create Your Career. Uh, stoked to be here, man. Finally getting it done. <laughs> yeah. I was even curious enough. I was like, when did we start talking? It was last August of 2019. So about roughly six months ago. And I can't remember how exactly, but we sparked. I mean, we talked a lot. We had a lot of good conversations. And then we hopped on the phone and had some good conversations too. And you were still gainfully employed in the in the military. And we were kind of waiting for you to yep. get out, but I've been looking forward to this for quite a while, and I'm really excited to talk about some of the things we're going to talk about today. And one of the things that attracted me to your profile, and then it turns out to be you, is all of the the kind of content that you're putting out. And it's not just an athletic company. I mean, there's so much more to it, and we can talk about it a little bit more. But I just want you to know, yeah. like, it was very unique to me, the level of impact through things as simplistic as one would think as Instagram stories, things like that were really cool and just drew me into your profile because I could tell that this person cares through things as quote unquote simple as that. So before we get into all of that other stuff, introduce yourself to some of the people that may not know who you are. Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, what's going on team? Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, name's Fitzy uh, on Instagram at FitzActual. The owner and founder of Warfighter Athletic, which is a military and fitness lifestyle brand. But as uh, Chris has said, you know, it's it's more than that to me, and it's a and it's a it's a mission. And so yeah, I'm based down here in New Zealand. But Warfighter kind of has um, two branches to it: one down here in New Zealand, and one out in San Diego, stateside. And uh, yeah, so served in the New Zealand Army for a little bit, but we'll, we'll tip that out shortly. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Man. 
Yeah, so that's one of the things I love talking about too is not only the company and the impact that the company is making on a much deeper level than what it sound it may sound like from the surface. And yeah, I do want to get into that. And then with your recent yeah. transition out of the military, I believe when we talked on the phone, you said you were in the military for 13 years. Is that about what it came to? Yeah, about that, yeah. More because or less. I joined at 17, but mm. then took a stint out where I went off to the UK, joined the British Army, came home, did special operations selection. So there's that period there where I was kind of still within the military realm, but like not uniformed. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. So you came in at 17, which is also, again, interesting to me, not... That's rarer over here. I mean, it definitely happens. So that's all you know. Like you said, that's all you know. So that's very interesting to me. Literally. So, so then if so, then my question, one of the first questions that I wanted to ask you, if that is indeed all you know, you came in at the tender age of seventeen. Then why have you chosen to get out now around the age thirty? Yeah, it's a good it's a good question. I guess one one of the key differences um, to, to to make straight away is you know like I worked a lot with. U.S. special operations over the last few years and uh, even some U.S. law enforcement guys. And the key difference is, is like after your career is finished, you guys get looked after like really well. And even if you think you don't, like compared to us, you do. You know, like <laughs> yeah. if you guys, you know, you've got pensions and you've got education schemes for your children, but we, we have none of that. So for us, that's literally like a thumbs up and a high five on the door and like thanks for coming. Wow. Like, for lack of a better word, like no one gives a fuck once you leave. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. So even after 20 years? Uh, even after 20 years, like you'll get like yeah. a cool medal yeah. um, you know, that you get to wear on Anzac Day or something like that. But after 20 years, man, it's just like no nothing. Wow. You get like a, a, a good service, good conduct medal. And uh, yeah, again, another high five. Pa- yeah, I was going to say a pat on the back and a, a attaboy. Yeah, like, yeah, we yeah, appreciate yeah. your Thanks service. For coming. So that's crazy. I mean, like we take a lot of things for granted, whether you're in the service or not. And I always try to, you know, I focus obviously on military because of I spent almost a decade, nine years in the military, and it's a huge part of my life. It's pretty much what I mostly did in my adult life up until this point. So I try to focus on that. But if you're not military, I always want to take things out of here and apply it to your own life. So maybe you're working another job most of your adult life. And you can see why am I asking this question to Fitzy? Because if you are in the military or if you're not in the military, you've been working this job for most of your adult life. Well, his answer, maybe it's military specific, but his mindset at least could be applicable to both military and could be applicable to non-military, at least exercising the question within one's own mind of, are there other things out there that I could be doing how can I do them? And then if they are better options than what I'm doing now, let's do them. And that's obviously a, a small, small little tidbit of the questions you were probably asking yourself to get out. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess for me, it was getting to the point where since joining since 17, you know, I guess like my family in general has always been, you know, and I'm, there's no hiding it. My family has always been second. Everything's always been second. But my career to the army was always first, you know, like I was just obsessive with it. I even went to the point where I stopped playing rugby and those sorts of things because I didn't want to get injured and then not be operational. Sure. Um, and like I quit the rugby team and all the rest of it. But, you know, now I've got I've got two kids. And so for me, it was getting to the point where um, we're, a bit, we're in a bit of an operational dry spell here. Mm-hmm. But got operations... And there's, you know, there's guys going away in drips and drips and drabs and stuff, but they're not, they're not hot and heavy. You know, like we meet up with our US partners or our UK partners every year uh, at these five ice conferences. And, and those guys are out there doing it in Syria and whatnot. And every year they ask for our help. Um, and every year we do nothing. And so for me, that actually started to really piss me off. Sure. I'm like, you know, like, are we playing fucking toy soldiers or are we still in the war on terror? like the rest of our partners. And so that was actually something that started to really like stir up a bit of negativity within me. And mm. Warfighter, so starting Warfighter, I guess was like, um, I mean, there's a lot of backstory to it, but like working on Warfighter for me was, it was like a relief mm. because if I was, you know, in this job, giving my heart and soul um, and get it, and not getting out to get out there in the world and create impact, it was really frustrating. But then through Warfighter, like you said, man, like, like the founding principle for Warfighter was like, give a fuck, like literally yeah, yeah. give a fuck. Cause there's so many companies that they don't, it's, you know, it's dollars over, it's dollars over humans every day of the week, you know, like, and 
even dealing with customer service now, I will do things that are like counter to probably profits. And some people are literally blown away. They're like, wow, your customer service is out of control. But to go back here to the question, I guess, is like, I was getting a lot of fulfillment from it. Um, I was getting DMs from people, man. And we spoke about this a little bit, but you know, one thing I definitely learned through Warfighter was like, people are hurting. And that's what some guys don't get. Like a lot of the population, they're either hurting, they're lost, they have no direction, they have no motivation, they have no discipline. And so when you're sharing tools, or for me, like I like to be really authentic. So I share about my childhood. I share about my failures and my first attempt at special operations selection and failing. And sharing that, like my dark times, like people then come around and say, hey man, like I really appreciate you sharing that because you know I'm having this shitty time right now. Or even like to the darkest point of like, yeah. I've, I've contemplated suicide and through finding your page, I now no longer want to do that. And for me, I was like, wow, like that's that's fucking humbling, man. Yeah. And so for me, it got to the point where it's like, there's nothing after this. Like I can have this amazing career. I can give my heart and soul to this country, to this unit, to the world as an operator wanting to go and fight the war on terror and the pieces of shit that are out there. But if my country won't deploy me, then it's like, what am I going to do? And mm-hmm. so it came to the fact of like, do I sit and wait to get deployed? Or do I go down this other road? And for me, it came back to my children. And so I looked at my daughter at the time because my son wasn't born. And I was looking at and I thought about my daughter. It was like, what is a better example? And what's going to impress her? Like once she's a woman, what's going to impress her more? The fact that I went and shot people in the face, you know what I mean? Like it is the war on terror, but like what's going to impress her and set a better standard? The fact that I went and shot people in the face or the fact that I created this brand after literally just being a grunt and then an operator, like no experience, no nothing, no skills, no university papers, no qualifications. And then when you created this brand that has a massive impact on people in their lives and it gives them motivation, it gives them direction, it gets them to believe in themselves and confidence. And so for me, I was like, it's a no brainer. Like I'm not going to wait around and this is what I'm going to go do. I mean, I love everything about that. And I'm just like thinking as you're talking, there's no way we could even begin to cover all the things that we've had in the phone calls. And I would just immediately encourage you to go ahead and follow Fitzy and Warfighter Athletic on Instagram and check out the websites and things. And all those will be listed in the summer, you know, in the footnotes. So you'll be able to check all that that stuff. Usually we interject that at the end of the episode, but I'm just, I already know, and you can already tell by listening to what he's saying right here, that there's a lot more to this story. But those are a lot of the great reasons that, um, I definitely support. I made the decision to get out too after nine years, despite popular opinion on other people. Like you said, you yeah. had no skills, you had no this, you had no that. You know, I would just call it a dropout. I didn't have a lot of the skills to quote unquote be able to succeed, whatever the hell that means in the civilian world, but yeah. I still did it. And one of my main reasons and what is so impactful for me to hear you tell your story is that now I have a one year old daughter and mm. I wanted to get out of the military because of that. I wanted to have a family and I wanted to be there for my family. I wanted to make that kind of impact. So that is different, but similar. And it resonates with me a lot. And I think that some people on the outside, at least in my experience, can't fully understand why you're making those decisions. But I want to highlight very strongly here what both of us, both Fitzy and I are saying right here is we looked in on ourselves and in on our families and we made the decisions because of those, but they were our decisions. They weren't other people's opinions of, well, maybe you should stay in, you know, like, come on, you know, and it's so cool that you interject it. You know, I I was a grunt, you know, just a grunt and didn't have all these skills. And like, that's one of the things I want to talk about and why I have this create your career podcast. The Christoph Lewis podcast is because I genuinely agree that it's create it's go out there and create by definition, something out of nothing. And that's what you've done. It doesn't matter where the hell you're coming from. It doesn't matter what you've done. It matters what have you thought about in your own head and why you want to do it. And then it matters about going out there and executing on that for those reasons. But if you're not doing any one of those reasons or you're stuck at one of those reasons, you're never going to be able to obtain the result that you want. So it's great to hear you describe all these things for us because I wanted to dig into the why you opened up Warfighter Athletic. And can you tell us more about the mindset about opening that up create or creating that business? Yeah, absolutely. I guess there's, there's kind of two pillars to it and I, and I mainly tell one. So I'll, I'll, I'll get on the first one quickly and then I kind of want to touch on the okay. second one too because I haven't really like spoke on it too much. Okay. Um, so the, the, the first kind of thing was 
you know, since a young lad, a lot of chaos in my childhood, but fitness has always been something that has been, I guess, a pillar of strength for me. It's something I was, I've always leaned on. Um, yeah, even as a kid going through half, uh, rough times and tough times, like there was like one thing that I could always look, look forward to and something that would make me feel good about myself, and that was sports and fitness. But for me, it was where it kind of originated was I was over on a trip with UKSF, and I had a friend just south of London, and he we were both in the infantry together, and we both served in Afghanistan together. So uh, we were messaging about catching up, and he's like, hey, man, why don't we go to Paris this weekend? And I was like, this is out of control. You know, all the way down here in New Zealand, we don't just you know, skip off to Paris for the weekend. So I was like, absolutely, let's do it. <laughs> so I went and caught up with him, jumped on the Euro Tunnel, popped up in, I think it's uh, Calais in France, I think it's called, and then we drove about two hours into Paris, spent the weekend there, bit of a bender and then woke up in the morning and we were just kind of um, seeing a little bit of Paris before we had to go catch the Euro Tunnel back across to England. And we were sitting in a park and we were literally talking about, we weren't talking about military specific, but we we're talking about fitness in general and how if you look at the industry and I was on Google pulling up all these things, but there's all these dudes like profiting heavily and off the fitness industry, but they're peddling bullshit and they don't actually give a fuck about people. And so the gist of that conversation was, was I said, Imagine if you actually gave a fuck. And that was kind of literally how the, the conversation faded wow. out. But I'll never forget that. I remember like, just saying to him, like, imagine if you actually gave a fuck about the person at the other end. Man, you could do some damage. And then so I kind of shelved the idea because yeah. from the UK, I had to go to a course in uh, Washington, Baltimore. I was out there with the US. Um, and then from there, that was like a hectic course. And then... From there, flew straight home, had four days to unpack my shit, reconciliate all my finances from the UK, US trip, and then went on a junior leadership course. And so I was just a whirlwind. And then on this junior leadership course, like before you should even get on the course, becoming a junior leader, there's like the army down here, we have a leadership framework. Um, and the, the first part of leadership is lead self, right? So like in order to be able to lead others, you should be able to lead yourself confidently. And we went and conducted at the start of the course uh, an RFL, which is similar to your guys' PFT or APFT. Uh, it's just a fitness test. Very similar to your guys. And we had 40% fail, like 40% wow. fail. And I was like, fucking hell, these are junior leaders, man. These are people who are going to go out and lead men and women. Like, this is unacceptable. And then if you take it, you know, soft, you know, we're, ext we're like a high readiness unit. And the way we train, the way we get after it, man, it's like, we take this shit for real. Like, you know, like when we step out that door, like it's fucking go time. So you want to be ready to go at all times. And then to go on this course with all cores and we've got 40% of people failing. I was like, there, there, there's a fucking, there's a, a culture issue here. Mm -hmm. A real culture issue here. Mm -hmm. So for me, that kind of, again, was like, like I need to do something. And um, I was on a podcast last week and was speaking about it and I kind of, I kind of said, you know, to the, to this guy, it's kind of like no, Donald Trump, like, let's make America great again. You know, like for me, it's like, let's make warrior culture great again. Like, let's let's make fitness great again. But it was one of those things where I, I truly believe, you know, like we when we join the army, for most of us, like there's a lot of us who come from broken backgrounds. And when we join the army, like we're taking a step in a direction to be better. But yet somewhere along the way, once we get the uniform, once we go through a little bit of adversity, a whole lot of us start to get real comfortable. And we start to, instead of wanting to be better, we want to be mediocre. And, you know, fitness is snuffed. And, you know, like there's, there's just a real bad culture shift somewhere along the way. And I thought, like, I want to make a fucking difference and an impact here. And when you look out in the world, man, it's no different. You know, there was, there was an article, it was the U.S. Navy, same thing. Issues about people passing, like the basic fitness test, where if you went back to the start of their career, man, they would have came in the Navy, they would have smoked that fitness test. They would have wanted to be better. They would have worn that uniform of, with pride, that flag on their shoulder. They would have been so geared up. And then somewhere along the way, it faded. So I was like, man, I really want to do something about this. Like, I want to literally, like, like make, like, warrior culture great again. And not just, like, the whole, like, shoot, move, communicate side. Mm -hmm. Like, the fitness side. And really inspire people to, to detest mediocrity. As cheesy as it sounds, but literally, like, fuck mediocrity. Yeah. Like, why? You didn't, you didn't join to be average. You didn't join to be mediocre. So fucking punt it. And and just and as well, just being like truly authentic and sharing my failures and saying, but like it doesn't matter if you fail, it doesn't matter if you quit. 
And so like, you know, like these thoughts, these feelings all are kind of what stemmed into, into making warfighter. Yeah, I like that because what you're doing is you're, you're taking things that you're seeing wrong in the world, at least in your opinion, or that you disagree with, or that you just see issues with, and you're turning around, not only you're identifying them, but you're again, creating something out of that and then actually implementing that. So why yeah. is that important for obvious reasons? For one of the maybe lesser obvious reasons is that typically a lot of people, when they see issues out there, they just go, oh, well, or they go, there's no way that somebody like me can make an impact like that. There's no way I could mm. affect change on so many people on such a, like your example is so good because it's fitness and fitness is already huge. It's a huge culture, like you said, but what you said was imagine if somebody actually gave a fuck, right? So you can still go out into a quote unquote saturated market or a large market or whatever market you you're going into. But if you go in there and change the game, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but you can change the game in your own way, in your own special way. And you can make that huge impact that you didn't see out there. And from your personal experiences, you're able to strategically change it. And I was in the Navy. I know how, like I was a fitness leader. I was given those tests. I know how brutal it is. I've seen many of my friends come in and then seen how they change, you know, it's just the brutal truth mm. and that's what it is. So there is a culture yeah. there and I've, I've lived it. I've heard it and you've done it too. So it's so cool. Like the common theme of this podcast, there's a lot of great things going on here is just that you are identifying issues and you're taking action. You're actually doing something about it. But even further, just like Warfighter Athletic, you're doing it and you actually care because you know, the listeners and, and you both know that I love asking the question of why do you help people? And I always say I love asking the simplistic question because the answer is mm. always different and it always promotes the change. So if you hear it, ask yourself, well, why do I help people? Oh, I don't help people. Then why don't you help people? You know, if you are listening. So I know we talked a little bit about your childhood over the phone, you and I. And we've touched yeah. on it a little bit here, but I want to pose the question to you now. Why do you help people? Does it have anything to do with, of course, what we just talked about more recently in the history of which is your life? Mm. Or does it go back even further? Yeah, no, it absolutely it does, man. It ties, it ties back heavily towards my childhood. Some people, have, you know, if they've been listening and they've been watching Warfighter and my story, then they, they know. But, you know, for those of you who don't know, I had this real bipolar experience in life and you know on the other hand like i was always like savagely competitive with my brother um and we were always just like wanting to win so that like will to win and that will to i guess to succeed whatever that means to to, to anyone you know that was kind of that was kind of always there but then on the other hand you know like at home there was some other like real chaotic times you know like 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 a lot of people probably joined the army you know but like he'd bounced off the fucking walls and mm -hmm. you know you, you, you stuff up and, and next minute you know like proper domestic violence type shit um and as a kid you know when the one person in the world who's meant to love you the most is like literally beating the fuck out of you you start to like, like what is going on here um and then conversely there was times where you know she was extremely loving and she was the best mum that you could have um and then go back to other times where like 12 years old like bought us alcohol you know like I still remember I lived in 22 Chapman Crescent, which was a government house. And I still remember at 12 years old, like being like blackout drunk. Like we started drinking and I was like 12 years old. My mum went off. It was just a bunch of us teenagers there, essentially 12 years old. I'm still a fucking kid. And I remember drinking these, I think they were called KGB um, vodka, bloody like lemonade drink things, you know, but they're like alcoholic. Yeah. And I remember just getting to the point where I was vomiting everywhere and then I would like come to a little bit and I'd be on the corner of our street, there was this hedge and I'm like leaning on this hedge and just absolutely blind drunk at 12 years old. And then mm. somewhere along the way, we got punted off to the old man and he had a wife over in Australia. And so, you know, for me, it was this really exciting, fresh start to life. And I was pumped, man, and went through the challenges of, of you know, like making new friends and changing countries and schools and knowing, knowing nobody and being a loner and a loser and all the rest of it. But, you know, I look back on those opportunities now and I do, I see them as like, it was an opportunity for me to grow as a person and, and it's definitely made me stronger. So I don't ever want to take that away. But then once I got to Australia and things were good and again, like right back into sports and athletics and all the rest of it, sprints and all the rest of it was like doing really well. 
And then the old man started to lose his marbles and then the family started to fall apart. And then the schizophrenia got so bad that literally all my brothers left. His wife left him, ran off, had an affair. And so it was just me and dad. And like, this is like the, the height of a schizophrenia. And so he's sitting there thinking like the government, the world, people are after him. And he used to have like this little bag of letters and he'd, he'd be like, oh, Jordan, I'm going out tonight. Like, look after look after these letters. I was like, yeah, sweet. And I'd sit there, like once he'd gone, I'd like go to my friend's house, take the letters and I'd be reading these letters, man. And it'd be like, oh, you know, like they came last night and they did a scan on my, on my son. Um, up to, to the point where like, I'd be sitting here like we are now and he's having a full-on conversation with no one. And like some of the shit he's saying is like concerning. And then another example of a schizophrenia is like 2 a.m. in the morning, laying in bed on a school night he comes, you know, bursting out of his fucking room and he's screaming at the top of his lungs like, get the fuck out of my head. Get the fuck out of my head, you cunts. And he's on the phone calling up the police and telling them to leave him alone. And, you know, like, I'm like 14 at this age. I'm dragging my drawers in front of my door. And then this just gets to the point, man, where I'm, I move out, uh, go stay with some friends and I'm just like, fucking hell, like, can this shit get any worse? You know, like, can, can life throw any more shit at me? Um, so I get on the phone to my mum and, you know, she's changed, she's changed and everything's all good now and she's going to do X, Y, Z and whatnot. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'll come home. I come home and, you know, at the time as a kid, I didn't know, but she's struggling with depression. And so, you know, like 14, 15 now, like she can't give us our beans anymore or give us a hiding anymore. Um, but we're sitting there having dinner and we make one wrong comment and she just bursts into tears and like, mate, it just becomes so uncomfortable in this yeah. toxic and and you've got undesirables coming to the house and man i just like i had these dreams and aspirations to be an air force pilot but um you know i met my partner who i'm still with now um and her family essentially took me in and it's still like i was kind of drifting back and forth between that between the two but like they gave me a, i think like a real good bit, like insight into like what normal looks like like what yeah. even normal is right like sure, sure. every family had issues and they're crazies but yeah. they gave me insight into like like what I guess normal looks like. And so for me, man, I was just like, I'm going to bounce and I'm going to go join the army. I don't have the goods to join the air force. I'm not smart enough for the mass and all the stuff that you needed. And so, you know, I went and, I went and became a grunt, but the army truly, it, it was life changing for me. You know, like I'm, not, I'm just, I always felt it, even as a kid, like I've always been a dreamer, but I'm just someone that I'm driven by purpose. Like I can't, go you know like and it's not to take anything away from plumbers and builders like they are crucial to the economy to society to the community but like i can't go fix someone's toilet i can't install a shower like that would like destroy my soul and so like the army was just like all these dreams that i had as a kid and you know you see these movies where they start they're like a nerd or they're whatever yeah. um, or they're a shit shake and they go to the army and you know it's normally an american movie um, and they go through the army and they come out this fucking savage at the end, you know what I mean? And yeah. then they're over in, you know, some, you know, Vietnam or whether it's fucking like Iraq or Afghanistan, whatever you're watching, you know, like they're fucking, like they're a warrior. They stand for something and fucking they're fighting a war on terror. But the army really did. It gave me so much purpose. It gave me family. Somewhere I felt like I belong. And don't get me wrong, it, it was a rough family. Like, you know, like it was a family that pushed you to your brink. And I had some like really tough times in the army. Yeah. Um, but they're things that have made me who I am today. And so for me, I know that no matter how shit it is, no matter how bad it gets, because I've experienced it, life will keep feeding you shit sandwich after shit sandwich after shit sandwich. And you just sit there eating them wondering like, when the fuck is this going to change? And so for me, like wanting to help people is like, it can change and it will change. Is it going to take a bit of work? Absolutely. But if you set some goals and and you decide that you actually want to change, you don't want to be a product of your environment. Like I had so much of my family, you know, like they probably won't enjoy this, but so much of my family at one point in time running around and like all of them, like a, a solid portion of them smoking crack. Like I couldn't believe it. Like even like the successful side of my family smoking crack. Yeah. And I was like, I couldn't meet up with them without like going, wow, that crack is taking a toll on you. You look fucking terrible, but just going back wow. to helping people, man, it's like, it's like, didn't want to be a product of my environment, wanted to be different, wanted purpose, wanted meaning, wanted some structure, wanted to fucking do something with my life. 
and the army's done that for me. And so through Warfighter Athletic, I want to inspire people to make that change and just to let them know that no matter how shit it is right now, shit can change for you if you want it to. I love everything about that. And I really appreciate you sharing that with me. I know that that's something we touched on a little bit more. You shared some more details that even we didn't discuss. And I know sharing that, regardless of how many times you share it, can be a little bit uh, you know, overwhelming or th- having that transparency. It takes you back to some yeah. extent, but you've obviously made peace with everything that you've done and you've made them for the absolute right decisions. And I'm a huge advocate of being able to share those. That's why that one of the reasons I have a podcast and I interview people and call them yeah. conversations is because I want to promote the conversation of sharing your story with the intention of helping other people, regardless of where your background is and what it was, it doesn't matter because you can make the change. And once again, you go out there and you can create something for yourself. And yeah, it is a shit sandwich after shit sandwich for quite a while there. What you can do is you can go out there and you can just, you can make something for yourself. And that's why I love that people like yourself speak with me because you're a real life example of somebody that's gone out there and done it. And I just want to encourage other people. And that's exactly the encouragement that you're being able to deliver as well through your own story and through Warfighter athletic. And it's incredible, man, that you're able to do all of that. Really. Yeah, cheers, man. No, it's, I, I, I appreciate having the platform to share the story. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like I, I have made peace with what's happened. Don't get me wrong. There's still some times where I, you know, sit there and, and, and it does, you know, it still might stir up. But uh, I've, in general, I've made, I've made peace with what it was. And instead of it being, you know, like mm-hmm. poor me, mm-hmm. man, I, I look back on my mum and my dad and think like, poor them, man, like they lost themselves. I didn't lose myself. They lost themselves. Yeah. You know, mum's not giving you a hiding because she's happy with who she is. Your mum's not bouncing your head off the wall because everything's going well for her. Your dad, you know what I mean? Like my dad was, man, he was fit. <laughs> He would go run, you know, like eight to 10Ks every single day. That Man, that dude could shift iron like you wouldn't believe. You know, like he taught me how to bench press. He taught me how to do pull-ups. He taught me how to hit a boxing bag. And then he, he lost himself. He lost his mind. So it's, that's how I've come to, I guess, to terms with it is where I've just gone, it's not poor me. You know, if anything, man, like, man, I wish they, they got a chance to do it over because I'm sure they'd do it differently. But yeah. Yeah, man. It's... Or I was going to say it can be hard to get out of that mentality, but I think it's hard if you succumb to it. If you choose to continuously to go to the the mentality of poor me, then I believe that that's what you're going to do. But if you pick yourself yeah. up, you know, and you put your shoulders back and you stand the hell up and you go, you know, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. What's happened has happened and I can't change that. You know, that sucks and it did suck, but I can change that. I can change that. I can change that. I can change that. And that's what you've done. And like I said, it's funny to see this come full circle because you said, you know, that's why you created Warfighter Athletic. I mean, we talked about a lot of reasons, but I said one of the first things I saw about you was even through your Instagram stories was how much you cared. And that's not even that's not even remotely ridiculous to me because I try to articulate myself and my mission in that fashion. I'm I'm more than appreciative of you coming on here and sharing that with me right here. And I'm just really, really happy that we were able to meet on such a platform. I love social media and I love being able to leverage a tool for the things that I want to accomplish and the things that I want to do in my life. And you and I are doing that right now. So you can go out there and do the same yourself if you're listening. I mean, God, just just go out there and do it. So I've more than, more than, more than appreciated your time here and coming on this episode and sharing your life and your story and everything that you're doing with your mission. And I already know that we could do this for another half an hour, an hour. So I already know that you're going to have to come on for another episode down the road, you know, do a recap of what you're doing with your life and the company. But before we get out here again, what's the best way everybody can follow you in Warfighter Athletic? Uh, Yeah, the best way would be on Instagram, which is at warfighter underscore athletic. You might need to put that up uh, with my accent. Um, And then my personal page is at fitsactual. And then the website, www.warfighterathletic.com. Um, and then on Spotify, we also have the, the podcast, which is Warfighter Athletic, The Kill Zone. Um, and there's a bit more stuff on there on my life. And man, it's just one of those things, again, where you just keep it real, keep it authentic, hit record and start sharing stories or thoughts and opinions. 
Yeah, I love that. I really love that you're able to do that. And I would encourage anybody to check out all that stuff. You'll be able to see that in the show notes. You can see this podcast on YouTube as well. You can head over there and subscribe. And pretty much you can find all this stuff everywhere. And it's really cool to be able to see that you've created a podcast as well. It's like one of those things that people sometimes ask of me is like, how the hell do you have the time to do all this stuff? And I don't. But I, I, I create the time to do it again. That's right. why, I, you know, I, I love that, that the word create. So you go out there and create. Pitsy, it's been a blast, man. I really appreciate it. And I cannot wait to go back and hear this one again. Have a great rest of your night. See you. Cheers, man. I appreciate it. Glad we got it done. Good vibration.